Why is Kamala Harris posing with the founder of an anti-Catholic hate group? They mock our faith. The sisters are men who dress in lewd imitation of Roman Catholic nuns that intentionally mock and degrade Christians. A drag queen comes in and kind of pulls Jesus off the cross. For Catholics, it's hard to imagine anything more offensive. Kamala Harris doesn't care about Christians in this country. Joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> The mainstream media and the Democrats are working hand in hand to try to throw this election. And I'm calling it. We're going to get into how Kamala Harris's appearance on Saturday Night Live violates the law. And even the FCC chair has spoken about this and many other things that are going on that I am absolutely disgusted by. They see that Trump is up in the polls. It looks like he's going to win the popular vote. He's winning in all the swing states. But lo and behold, they're trying to drop fake stories, fake news everywhere, deranged polls that show Trump is, uh, that Kamala is winning Iowa by four points, which is insane. An the more reputable poll dropped to show that Trump is winning Iowa by 10. It this is it's, it's just nonsense. But you know that the Democrats are desperate because they are even attacking Trump voters. And you're going to, I want to play this because this was is going around on Twitter, where is a woman who is a black Trump supporter is attacked by a white Karen who is just outraged that she's not voting blue, no matter who. So I call them white. So I call them white. Am I a liberal? Do I do I disagree? Are you a Yes, I am. Okay. So the only thing you can so the only thing you can do is the only thing you can do is challenge me. The only thing you can do is just hit the only thing you can do is challenge me. The only thing you can do is Good afternoon, guys. Uh, I have two videos that I'm going to show you. Uh, I had a very fiery interaction with a liberal this morning. Uh, this is not foreign for me. It happens. People look at me, they assume that because I'm black and because I'm a black female, uh, obviously I'm a Democrat. So these attacks uh, tend to happen, uh, but not as ferocious as today's attack. And she's not the only woman this is happening to. 
if you are a woman of color or a black woman and Democrat women, old angry Karens realize you're not voting for Kamala Harris, well, they get really, really nasty. So I want to explain to what just happened. I am in this beautiful place on vacation, a little staycation with my family, and I agreed to participate in a Santa Monica College emeritus meeting and talk about uh, the upcoming election and who I was supporting. And I was treated with such vitriol and hostility by the white, um, mostly female liberal women who were in the class. I, I can't say I've ever encountered anything like that before from people who call themselves tolerant. Check yourselves, huh? I, it's just laughable what they're trying to do now. Even Tim Walls, who he's now resorted to calling Elon Musk gay, basically. And even Joe Biden wants to now, I guess, rub on Trump's behind. And I guess any of his, the men who support him, they want his his butt. If you're a billionaire, Elon Musk, for example, say, that guy, that guy got it. <laughs> Michigan knows that word. <laughs> look, that dude got a tax cut. But I'm serious. These are the kind of guys you like to smack in the ass. You like to smack in the ass. Kamala's desperation is at an all time high. She's giving the same speech over and over and over again, which I showed you guys yesterday. It's just canned responses that are empty and devoid of any real substance. And she panders for votes depending on who she's talking to, what audience she needs to try to sway her way. This is what she keeps saying at churches on Sunday morning, which now suddenly she's this woman of God and she's on the chitlin circuit of black churches and going into her, you know, real black preacher woman speak. But it's the same deranged speech and just canned responses as she normally gives. We are reminded weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> that while weeping may endure for a night, Joy cometh in the morning. And it's amazing. She's running on everything but her actual record. She always speaks of her record. I was a prosecutor and I did this and I did that, but never gives any detailed facts. None of her operatives give any detailed facts because they know if they did, it would show how horrible she is. How did you vote on Prop 36? So I have, my ballot is on its way to California and I'm going to trust the system that it will arrive there. Um, and I am not going to talk about the vote on that because I, honestly it's the Sunday before the election and I don't intend to create a, an endorsement one way or another around it. So, but I did vote. She was asked about Proposition 39 in California that will give tougher penalties for retail thieves and different crimes happening. And for some reason, she doesn't want to answer how she voted because it's too close to the election. Again, she tries to hide who she really is, deceiving people, lying over and over. And if you are tough on crime, as you say you are, then wouldn't you want to give that answer? Wouldn't that be a great soundbite to say, yeah, look, Kamala's really tough on crime. She's really doing the work of the people. She's, she doesn't want to see illegals doing all of these crimes. She doesn't want to see California to continue to slip into a bastion of, of, of criminality anymore. But no, 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 she can't admit that she's not tough on crime. She can't admit her lies and her record is just deception even right before the election, which you would think this would help her. Everything about her and her campaign is fake and she keeps copying Donald Trump through everything. Even her Saturday night live appearance last night literally copycatted what Trump did on Saturday Night Live. Now I can't play the videos here because they're going to of course get copyrighted. You can't really share their clips, but you can just see from the images I'm showing you that they're doing the exact same thing. Nothing about this woman is original, but lo and behold, my oh my, looks like this was a violation of the law. 
Take a look at what the FCC chairman had to say. Breaking, the FCC commissioner, Brendan Carr, warns the Kamala Harris SNL skit this close to the election breaks FCC rules meant to prevent broadcasters from unfairly influencing voters. This skit clearly aims to dodge the FCC's equal time rule, which exists to prevent this kind of partisan bias on public airwaves right before an election. And do you know what that means? That means that they actually have to give equal time to Trump before November 5th. See this plan that she had where she actually skipped out from uh, a rally and campaigning to do this, you know, this very sneaky thing, of course, again, working with the mainstream media to do this type of thing, but it was illegal. So now we gotta figure out what are they gonna do? But most likely what they'll try to do is they violate the law, they cheat, this is what Democrats do, and then they ask for forgiveness later, well after the election is over and before anything can be done about it. But all of their efforts to try to deceive and to you know, make up lies and how the media tries to do things, even on their own programming, they are getting killed by what real people have to say. And this is why on November 5th, we have to vote and vote like crazy because we need to make sure that mainstream media gets the whipping that they deserve, that the Democrats get the whipping they deserve, and so does Kamala Harris. Every day, the ads, masses of flyers, text, and mail. Do you read it all? No, maybe a few months ago, but now it's become overwhelming. And for Jalbert, who works three jobs to make ends meet for his young family, none of these ads are changing his mind. We were thriving under Trump's administration, and right now we aren't. You know, I'm... I'm I'm a regular guy, I'm a working class guy, so I can't sit here and you know explain economics to you, but as a regular guy, I can say, under this administration, we're thriving, now we aren't.